Hey, what's up, everyone? Thank you for joining us here for episode four of the Creative Hustle podcast. Number four for folks at home, like the Four Horsemen. We are riding to get today into the sunset. We are talking to uh, Russell Woods owner Jonathan Balls. He uh, is it was at one time someone I worked with, and uh, once I, I dug a little deeper, I found out uh, Jonathan's got a very interesting story. We'll uh, we'll get to that here in a second. But folks, uh, a bit of uh, a bit of an apologies on my part. We were planning on doing this uh, last week. That's why if you, you go to the show notes and you look on iTunes and you look on Stitcher, it says uh, one and then three. I uh, actually, I skipped the interview around. I didn't want to uh, to put myself out of place. So uh, we, we rescheduled. We were able to get Jonathan in this week. Uh, folks, Creative Hustle is all about just that, folks, the uh, the small businesses, business owners, and what it takes these days to really put yourself out there, to be on social media, to, to plug away. If you, you guys do follow Jonathan's uh, wrestling company here, Russell Ruse, it's at Russell Ruse on Twitter. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go into more of the plugs in, in a minute when I bring them in. But folks, you know, Creative Hustle, in, in, it doesn't just go with businesses. It, it goes in what you're trying to do with yourself and your life. And if you've got that drive in you, and we'll definitely touch uh, all those topics and more here with Jonathan in just one second. Folks, like I said, uh, hit the little bird, tweet it out, let your friends know what's going on. Uh, let me see. Uh, got a little bit of popping here. I have this windscreen, you know, not to get off subject, but I have this windscreen that I really didn't set up, but, uh, hopefully the mic's not too bad of an issue. Um, uh, folks, like I said, we are joining here live on Blab. Uh, you know, sorry if you guys are, are catching this on the recording later on on iTunes, but, uh, we, uh, I'd like to welcome in our guest this week, Jonathan Balls from, uh, Russell Ruse. I guess, uh, that's the main thing you want to plug. Um, sure. I mean, we could, we could call you a podcaster. We could, we could call you a life changer. I mean, you're doing some good stuff, man. Dude, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, we, uh, we worked together on a few projects, you know, uh, that's where I knew you from, but you know, digging a little deeper, I'd like to, to definitely get to know, you know, the people I'm working with, um, you know, the emails back and forth. I could tell you're a, a good guy. You're a business orientated guy. Um, you know, and like I said too, I saw you at, at the uh, the Wizard World deal in Chicago. I should have really stopped by and started talking to you then. Uh, that was a know. that was a good show for us. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely the, the Fan Fest deal in Chicago. Um, you know, like I said, it was a it was a good time. I saw you guys out there. Uh, it was at the time the the table was kind of busy. I didn't uh, didn't want to bother you guys too much there. But uh, yeah, it was it was busy all weekend. That was it, that was even like a really small show for Wizard World. Like totally last minute, we happened to be just passing through. Like you know, oh let's add that to our little tour that we were doing. I was doing some other meetups for our nonprofit and stuff like that. But um, that show ended up being great. Like one of our best ones we ever did. Yeah, and it was definitely a smaller show. It was a they called it a fan fest. Yeah, uh, which I, I, you know, I took advantage of. I hadn't um, attended any any Comic Cons or Wizard Worlds or anything like that yet, so I thought a smaller one would be good to start out with. Uh, yeah. you know, they had a couple of really cool guests, um, and you know, I, I we stopped by, and then I, I, I knew of you at the time. Um, you know, in in the small wrestling community, we all kind of know everyone, or is at least yeah. seen. Yeah. You know, we've seen everyone's logo and on Twitter and stuff like that, so kind of I kind of knew what you guys were about. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Let's uh, we'll go ahead and get into the backstory of that. What did that uh, where did that sparkling idea come from, sir? Dude, all right. So I've been a wrestling fan really my whole life. Um, my dad was a chiropractor in uh, South Louisiana during the '80s, so Mid South wrestling was still going on, and so there was wrestlers coming in and out of Baton Rouge all the time. So he had a lot of wrestlers as patients in his clinic: Jim the Emblem Neidhart, Nikolai Volkov, the Bushwhackers, you know uh, Barry Darso, or you know Smash from Demolition, uh, Crusher Khrushchev. You know, just. He had all these guys always coming in and out, and then he would like work out with some of them at you know the health club and everything, Million Dollar Man. So it was just kind of like on my radar. And then I remember the first time I ever actually saw wrestling on TV, I was like, this is the most amazing thing. And it was when Demolition debuted in WWF. That was one of my first like actual wrestling memories. And so, I mean, just as a kid, always loved it. And um, kind of faded off, you know, after WrestleMania, I think maybe 11 or 12, probably 11, and um, then got back into it. Um, and so, and we can get into this later, but had like a big life change and, you know, decided like, hey, you know, I'm, 
uh, this was uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. We had you know major life change, decided to start some small businesses, and I had uh, been in punk rock bands all through high school and college and was real into that like DIY t-shirts, stickers, make your own merch, that kind of thing. And so I was like, got back into wrestling, said, oh, I think I'm going to you know start doing some wrestling t-shirts and stuff. But my wife, she said, I mean, everybody's making t-shirts. Is anybody making the underwear? And I'm like, what do you mean the underwear? And she, you know, like print them like to look like the wrestler's trunks. And I was like, that's a great idea. So I Googled it. And the only thing that came up when I Googled it was how come no one is making pro wrestling underwear? And so I thought, hey, let's give it a try. So literally from an idea, you know, two years ago to here we are, we've been in business a little bit over a year and a half. And it's going well, man. We've got we ship them all over the world every week, so it's it's going good. Yeah, and it's definitely like I said, everyone everyone's got their own story, and it's definitely you know, like I said, if you find something that you're passionate about, and you know, something that you like, you said you've always been a fan. Um, you know, that's kind of where my my design uh, where my design company started from. Um, you know, in 2006, when I started on, on this crazy journey, um, I had a, you know, a life, a, a kind of a life altering event, but, uh, my brother passed away and I looked at myself at the time and I was 32 and I was like, you know, am I actually doing what I enjoy doing? And, you know, and yeah. I, I got this, cr this crazy idea, this, I, you know, midlife crisis thing. Uh, and I, I said, I was going to be a wrestler. Yeah. I was like, screw it. I'm going to be a wrestler. <laughs> and I found, and I found a school and I, I signed up and. Uh, you know, they looked at me and they're like, you're five, eight and one forty five, one fifty. Like, you know, you're not doing this. And I, I, and I paid, I was like, yeah, no, I'm doing it. And, um, you know, I went through a couple of weeks of training and they looked at me and they're like, obviously this guy's not going to not show up. Yeah. Like he's going to come. So, um, they offered me a referee's position. I was like, okay, well that's, that's cool. And it's funny that you started off with Nightheart because I actually got to referee one of his matches and, nice. uh, and and the kid in me was like, I should not be in the ring with Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Like, <laughs> right, right. You know, this this isn't happening. You know, and the same thing with like Grave the Hammer Valentine. I was like, no, like I should not be in the ring with these guys. And, um, you know, and then on the other side, like I started working in the office, <laughs> which you know is just a couple of guys and you know yeah. they're putting things together. But um, Somebody you know, the clipboard. Yeah, the clipboard and the notepad, and we're we're the office. So um, you know, at, we're our first big event after training. We uh we went to this local place in town to get a flyer and you know it was eighty dollars and it was two two square photos and some text and this was you yeah. know like I said oh six oh seven and I looked at it and I was like you just paid eighty dollars for that and they're like yeah and I was like no like never again I, yeah. I will teach myself Photoshop right and, you know and then when the company closed in two thousand twelve I sat there and I was like I have a skill you know I know people because I traveled on the road for seven years you know let's let's put two and two together and let's get myself out there and I think. You know, that's really, you know, you get an idea, you know, small, that's how small businesses start. You get an idea. Right. And it's like, okay, can, you know, you, like you said, you Googled it up. Can, can this be done? Is there a need for it? Uh, you know, and then let's see what it takes to, to get things, uh, yeah, to get things going. And, you know, like you said, you, you looked at it, you're like, Hey, we can print these out. And you know, like you said too, there are a lot of t-shirt companies. Like yeah. every, everyone wants to make. And they're so cool, man. They like every day I see like another shirt. I'm like, Oh God, that's amazing. I got to have that, you know? Yeah. And you know, like I said, you guys do something different. Um, you know, it's still in the realm. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a bit outrageous and I love, you know, I love your advertising. I know that, you know, you're big on, uh, on Twitter and the, uh, the Photoshop photos of uh, right. guys holding the trunks. <laughs> that's just hilarious. Uh, and you know, and it's like, and I look at it at first before I didn't know you, I looked at him and I was like, I could do way better. And then I'm like, but that's not the point. I'm like, yeah. it's supposed to look really bad. And right. I mean, you exactly. know, being a, yeah. And being a fan of like cheesy eighties movies, I was like, okay, I get it. Like, right. Supposed, per, supposed to purposely look bad. Cause then uh, part of me is like, I can make it really look like the guy's holding it. Like I could yeah. really, you know. Well, and part of the deal too is at, because my personality is I'm definitely like a perfectionist. And so at first, I was trying to be as careful with it as I possibly could, right? And like to really try to do it good. And then I realized, look, this is it's taking way too much time. It's not really that important. And so I'm just going to slap it up there and in some cases make it even more ridiculous than, you know, than necessary. 
because I do everything. I do I do all the social media. Anything that goes out, it is because I posted it on my phone or on my laptop. And um, and so because this is just like one of like five or six other things that I do, and I can't I can't spend an entire day perfectly photoshopping underwear onto <laughs> an old vintage picture. And so you know I'll take about one day out of every month, and I'll make thirty you know, fun Instagram pictures and then put them all in later gram and then I'll have them ready for me, you know? But so a lot of that is necessity of like, I don't have the time to, to make it like that. But uh, yeah, it kind of goes with the gimmick too, of just being kind of over the top and ridiculous. Yeah. And like I said, you know, um, you know, you said you, you mentioned you have, you know, other things and we'll get to that, uh, yeah. you know, in a minute, but you know, one of five things, uh, you're definitely a busy guy. So, you know, if you can get that all out, um, you know, and like I said, um, it, it, it fits, you know, they're fun. And, you know, I looked at them at first and I was like, okay, you know, part of me is the, the same perfectionist, you know, like right, I, can right. do, I can do a lot better than that. And I'm like, but no, but it, it really fits what he's got going on. Uh, and, you know, like I said, I, I've noticed, you know, you really got a, a pretty good following there on Twitter. You know, it seems like, you know, everyone really, really digs what you guys are doing. Um, you know, did you think you were going to reach this, this bit of success with, with the project, you know, going into it, you know, the ideas always sound great. Like it's yeah. that, but did you think this is, was going to take off as, as much as it has been, or has this been a surprise to you? Well, I tend to be like, not just an optimist, but like a ridiculous optimist. <laughs> and so I'm kind of like, Oh my God, like we're going to sell the, you know, we're going to yeah. go, these are going to go nuts, man. These yeah. are the greatest thing ever. And then we didn't sell anything for the first six weeks like not even so much as an order. We had decent traffic to the website and people started following on Twitter and whatnot, but literally zero sales for the first six weeks. And then we got that first one and then, you know, just kind of over time. But, you know, the other day I was listening to um, Colt Cabana's podcast and, you know, in the beginning he's, you know, going through his plugs and, and everything. And, and he referred, he's like, you know, I've got lots of stuff in my merch store. You know, I've got T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters. I've got some Rassel Ruse. I've got, and when he said that, I was like, "Man, we've like we've created a thing." Like yeah. when he says Rassel Ruse, people know that is pro wrestling underwear. I have underwear with boom boom on it. You know, and like going from that's an idea that my wife and I had to now here a year and a half later, it's like it's a thing, and people know about it. And you know, we've we've, we've shipped them all over the world and, you know, they've been on national TV and we've, you know, it's, it's, it's very cool. And so I'm very, it's, it's been, we have fallen like butt first into so many great, um, just opportunities and, you know, partnerships and stuff like that. So yes and no, like I didn't expect it to so quickly become like a known thing. And there's been some very surprising things, but um, you know, I think starting out, I, I definitely wanted it to be successful and I didn't, um, you know, I wasn't too negative about it, uh, <laughs> you know, but the first six weeks I was a little nervous. I didn't know if we were going to sell any, but you know, here we are. Yeah. And what are you guys doing? Are you guys doing a print to order or did you, do you have a stock up a, a bit, a small stock up and you kind of go from there? Well, we, uh, print to order would be amazing, but <laughs> what, um, and at first we were kind of doing that. Um, but I, you know, being a small business and, you know, definitely like a one man show at first, I had a friend of mine in Kansas city who he was, he had a print shop and he was going to print and ship them for me. So I would just send him the orders and, you know, then he'd take care of the rest, but there started to be some like kind of kinks in that. And I wasn't able to like really like quality control. And then we had some wholesale orders that, you know, they needed them faster. And so, I actually bought a press myself. And so I actually make them all in my house. Awesome. And yeah. And so we'll keep a small inventory on hand. Uh, we have a 450 square foot apartment, so we don't have a lot of room. <laughs> yeah. So literally all of the inventory, I'm able to keep it in my closet uh, in four different bins, you know, the different sizes and stuff. And so, uh, but we're, we're really uh, fortunate that the American Apparel Warehouse is just about 10 miles from our house. So we're able to go and buy blanks whenever we need it. Um, so usually like one one day every month to six weeks, I'll just kind of take over the whole apartment and we'll make enough inventory for the next month or so. And then when that gets low, I'll go down to the warehouse, do it all over again. Yeah, because I was thinking like, you know, you said 
<clears throat> and I knew the inventory, if he did have some, it wouldn't be big. But he said that first six weeks, I can only imagine what it would be like sitting there with, you know, 50 of each or, you know, 10 of each design and going, okay, like, everyone's getting Wrestle Roos for Christmas if these don't sell. Like, right, right, uh, right. You know, so yeah. there's that, you know, that's 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 a risk of, of being a small business person. Uh, yeah, no, definitely can feel you on, you know, working with someone. I think, uh, you know, I I had I have that that issue as well. Um, you know, the one person you can trust the most is yourself, uh, as far as, you know, getting things done and, uh, for, for someone else to be in charge of your quality control and getting things out, right. um, you know, and it, it really goes to, <clears throat> you know, and it really goes back to, you know, the, what, what the show's about hustle and creativity and, you know, your priorities to get things out might not be, you know, the same as someone else's priorities. Uh, right. You know, and many a time when you're starting out, you want to, you know, you want to have the, the customer service standards and stuff like that. You just kind of want to have your hands in everything. And so that was really important to me. So we're kind of now at the point now we're here probably in the next six months or so, we're going to maybe look at other options, uh, you know, for that and maybe actually get it out of the house, but, but we'll see. I mean, so far it, it's been working really, really well, but we've, we've learned a lot. We've made a lot of, uh, made a lot of, uh, I'm not going to call them mistakes because we definitely learned from them and we didn't know any better at the time, but um, we're, we're kind of honing in on it, you know, and like here we are like a year and a half into it and I feel smarter and more, have more clarity uh, than ever before about the the right direction. So, yeah. And you, you know, you definitely with it, with anything, you definitely learn from your mistakes, um, you know, and that's, you know, like I said, I was going to say, like if you kicked us off and you didn't have that six weeks where you weren't sure what's going on, I think, you know, the mindset would be a lot different. You'd, you'd kind of just be like, okay, I launched this thing and we're here. And, right. we were, you know, they're here the whole time. Right. And, you know, if something happened all of a sudden and there was no business, you'd be like, what the hell did we do wrong? Exactly. Like, but but you started out slow. You know, no one knew about you guys. And once, you know, you worked your butt off to, to advertise and to get the word out there, you took off. And that's what hard work is all about. And, you know, like I said, it's – you know, we're, we're hustling and we're being creative and, um, you know, that's, you got to put yourself out there. I didn't, I had three weeks ago, I didn't have a podcast or four weeks ago. I didn't have a podcast. Yeah. Uh, I came into Blab and I was talking and just chatting it up and uh, a guy sent me a message. He's like, you got a pod- podcast? Like, he's like, you bring, you know, good energy to the room. He's like, you, you talk a lot. I'm like, oh yeah, I talk a lot. I'm just, you know, I use, I was using Blab to, as a coffee break. Like I do my client work and stuff and, and I come in here and just, you know, blow it off and slack off. And, um, you know, you'll find if you ever, you know, do a little bit deeper on Blab, um, the daytime is a lot of social media marketers, uh, you know, and they're pushing their eBooks and their, their courses and their stuff. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, and I'm just coming in and I'm just talking, I'm not trying to push my, my company or my agenda. You know, it's really fortunate that this is linked up to Twitter. So yeah. if, you know, if I want to find out about someone, you just click my little link, you know, you see my profile, you see what I'm about, uh, you know, and you follow me if you want. But, um, you know, I am not a pushy salesman, um, you know, like I, the way we met, you know, you were just looking for someone for help. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm always around to help, um, you know, and, and like you said, you know, you wanted the customer service to be top notch. You wanted the orders out right away, um, you know, and. You know, you wanted to build that, that whole like, hey, when we order from these guys, it's coming. Right. It's good, it's good product. There's not an error. And if something does happen, you know, uh, I'm sure you guys will replace it or you'll you'll make it up to them. So, uh, yeah, I really feel customer service is, uh, you know, really important. Um, the first, you know, the first year I was doing this and I mostly did it for free. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say I made millions right, of dollars. Right. But, you know, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I put it out there. I was just looking to get my foot in the door. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard, you know, like I said, with, with putting yourself out there and getting people to know it. And then once you're known, you know, then things, things happen for you. What was it like, uh, approaching different wrestlers for, for the, the rights to be able to do something for them? Well, how was, how's that been? Well, the, the, all the, uh, licensing deals and stuff that we have right now, we actually got those through our relationship with pro wrestling tees, uh, Ryan over there, he's yeah. a great guy. And so he's somebody that we've been talking to really, I mean, almost since like the first, you know, month or so that we even had the website up. Um, he saw us online and he immediately sent me an email. I was like, Hey, you want to work out a wholesale deal? So we did, 
and they were selling some of our stuff there. And then uh, back in August of this year, um, we had been talking for a long time about adding Rassel Roos to the pro wrestling tee shops of different wrestlers. And uh, we came up with the best way to do that. And so we, uh, we just went with people that they already had contracts yeah. with. And so that was kind of how it worked. So we, you know, did the designs and stuff like that, sent them off, got them approved by the wrestlers. And so actually Ryan and one hour tees, they do all of that on their own. So they, they, they'll take the order, they print them, they ship them and they do all that. And then they just send us, uh, you know, our cut of the deal. But, um, so that's, that's great for us, especially, you know, any, any time you can automate something like that and leverage a partnership with somebody that's got an incredible following. I mean, that's basically like, uh, I liken it to having, uh, your, you know, having your product in a Walmart, you know, because when it comes to wrestling, uh, pro wrestling tees, they're, you know, they're the website, you know, outside of WWE yeah. shop, but for our target market is not really the normal wrestling fan. It's really going to be the super fan that would know about pro wrestling tees. And so to have our stuff in there is, it's a huge deal. And it's helped us, uh, tremendously with even traffic on our site and, you know, having a partnership with those kind of people is great. And then it's amazing. I mean, we've got CM Punk Russell Roos, you know, and um, Roddy Piper. And, and just it's I, I never thought when we started that we would have that those kind of relationships this early on. Definitely. And like I said, it's uh, they are definitely the, the, the place to be for, for wrestling fans and for T-shirts and stuff like that uh, outside of the WWE T-shirts, uh, you know, and it's I. You know they're doing a good job because <clears throat> I don't know if you saw it the other day, but they're they're uh, they're being I don't know like talked about being sued uh, for, for the <laughs> yeah. for the Brad Maddox shirt. Yeah. Like that's that's when you know you're doing something right when when the big companies take notice and the, and they're coming after you. And you know that's you know also a vibe of my positive my positivity. Like I don't look at it as oh, oh we're we're getting sued or you know anything like that. we're in trouble. I look at it as hey look we're this small little guy that WWE is actually taking notice. We're making oh, yeah. that much. Of, oh, you know, yeah. we're making that much of a wave that yeah no um, we we've, we've gotten our emails that's for sure. Yeah, and I was gonna say I uh, the only thing I've come across is a few years back I uh, I got an email from the Patriot. Uh, we, uh, I, I, you know, I was on a, I was doing a design for a flyer, uh, a company that they, they pay me. I put who they asked me to put on the flyer. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, and he, uh, he said that I, uh, he wasn't at the event that I used a, a, a fake Patriot and that he was, he was coming after me, uh, for put for putting that on there. And I was like, look, I just, uh. <laughs> I just get the guys they tell me to put on there. Like that is yeah, but at yeah. the same time, but at the same time, like I was a year into it and I was like, Oh shit, the Patriots trying to sue me. Like <laughs> this is <kind laughs> right. Of awesome. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely, you know, like I said, working with pro wrestling tees. Um, I, you know, I've talked to Ryan a bit, uh, when I first set up my store, uh, I don't actually, um, I don't actually, you know, do tees for, for the company itself. I just have a, one of those artist pages yeah. that uh, I've worked with other people. Uh, but yeah, no, they're, they're great guys. They're a great company. They're really, they really have a lock on what's going on. Um, you know, in the same way that you do, I don't know if anyone's ever going to come up and be like, you know, we're going to, we're going to steal the idea and try to do something better. I don't think there's getting any better on it. I think you guys have a really good lockdown on what, what you're doing. Um, how would you feel if somebody came up and was like, you found a competitor? Look, man, I, I think that competition is a good thing. Um, I think that it's probably only a matter of time, um, specifically before WWE would jump into it, uh, which I hope they do. Like, go to town, man, because I know that, like, I know that I was the one that made it first. Nobody else has done this yeah. yet. And, um, and that's, that's totally cool. Like, that's fine. I, this is not, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, become, you know, this pro wrestling merchandise mogul necessarily. <laughs> this is just kind of one of several things that, you know, that we have going on. And actually when we were at WrestleCon this past year, Matt Stryker came up and talked to me for a while and he was just, man, this is such a great idea. Like, don't let anybody shit on it. Like, this is this is awesome what you're doing and somebody's going to steal this, you know, <laughs> you know, one day there that's going to happen. And, and that's, and you know, it's kind of inevitable, you know, like yeah. there's all kind of, especially even like right now, I, I think that, um, 
there is, uh, you know, like those uh, two wheel like hoverboard things that are like so popular right now. It's kind of like a segue without the handles. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was listening to another podcast about it that there's actually nobody owns the patent on those. Like they're just kind of there's probably I think they said like 11,000 different factories that are making wow. parts for those things. And it's just really incredible to see that like it just it makes it that much better. You know, I think that it's so hard, especially too with, you know, with the wrestling stuff. And there's so many, so many gray areas of like what's copyrighted and what's not copyrighted and what's making money off of somebody else's gimmick and stuff like that. And it, it's just like, man, just make cool stuff. And there's going to be people that love what they love and like what they like. And, you know, there's some people that would never, you know, find Rassel Roos, but they will find WWE shop and, you know, whatever, but you know, you just make your thing. And I think competition is good, you know? Yeah, and I, you know, there's a small community of us designers that, that do this. And, uh, you know, I'm, I am I try to keep friends with all of them. There's some that I've tried to say hi to and they care less. But, um, you know, I don't, you know, I don't look at it as I'm fighting someone else for, for a, a project or a client. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I work with the guys I work with um, and, you know, I'm there to help out. I, I've, you know, I've. I've got my clients. I, you know, I'm happy with, with the guys I've got. Um, you know, I've got relationships I've worked with for you know a few years now. They're not going anywhere. They're happy with what I'm doing. Uh, if I can help out someone who just started, uh, you know, whether it be on you know resources, photos. You know, I'm always hitting up guys for photos. Um, you know, and I look at it in the big picture. We're all helping. Uh, you know, the show. We're all helping yeah. the product look good. Um, and you know, it's. You know, hey, it's if I, I, you know, I sometimes look at numbers and go, why do you know, why is my Twitter handle not as, you know, as popular as some of the other ones? I, I, right. do, I you know, I do do that, but at the same time, uh, from from a, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I rather have uh, loyalty and quality people following and following back. Uh, you know, if there is a, a time where I'm trying to push something, you know, if I ever write a book or something, uh, I like to know that. You know, I might only have 500 people following me, but you know, 300 of those I can make a, a sell. Yeah, you know, that's you know, and I and I and I look at it and like I think I have like 500 or something or so, and I, you know, I'm gonna guess about. I was looking at this the other day. I'm gonna guess about three or 400 of those. I have some idea who the person is. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and you know, it's not like you know, if you, you, once you get you know to that level of success and you have like a thousand people, like you're not gonna know all those people. Right. There's, There's just no way. way you can know all those people. Um, but you know, like I said, if I, I like to keep it a smaller, tight knit community, um, and you know, and, and like you said, the wrestling ruse, that's, that's not your bread and butter. It's, it's going to take off. And I hope, you know, I hope you are the, the pro wrestling merch mogul one yeah. day. Um, yeah. that, that would be awesome. You know, from, from, you know, the little apartment to like this big house and, you know, everything's going good. Um, but you know, you definitely said, you know, you've, you've got the podcast going on. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, I checked out the Christmas episode last night. Um, you know, I, the first time I went to an interview you that got rescheduled, um, you know, I looked a little bit deeper and, you know, I saw that you kind of stepped away from, from, from the norm. You kind of made a life change. Um, let's, let's go ahead and touch a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I grew up, uh, from, I mean, my earliest memories, my parents, uh, always had me in church. And I actually became a youth pastor, got hired on staff at a church when I was 15 years old. And for the next 16 years, that was the only job I had. I was a pastor. Um, I basically had every job you could have at a church except for being the head guy in charge. And I uh, was very successful at it, led a lot of uh, very large groups of people, had you know uh, internship programs that I was running that became the largest uh, of their kind in the nation. And I mean, it was just full blast, you know, multi-million dollar budgets, 15 staff members that directly reported to me and, you know, influence and all kind of stuff, you know? And then uh, when I turned 30 back in, uh, well, I was like three years ago or no, four years ago, uh, cause I'm 34 now. Uh, I just kind of had this thought of like, man, like this is as far as I ever thought for my life. We lived in Austin, Texas. We had a big house. We had fancy cars. Everything was, it was just like, you know, set. Yeah. But I was very, very dissatisfied and, and kind of like, man, like I'm only like a third of the way through my life. And this is kind of as far as I thought, like what else is there? So over the next year, uh, we kind of transitioned out 
of, of where we were. And then we sold our house, sold most of the stuff that we had. And then we just kind of started traveling for like a year and went to go visit a lot of family and friends, went over to Europe for a while uh, to see uh, my wife got to meet her family in Ireland that um, her dad was adopted from there. And so we got to you know meet all the distant relatives that nobody knew there were. <laughs> and so yeah. uh, we did that and really just kind of decided like, okay, like, Outside of all that, you know, kind of corporate institutional religious type stuff that I just, man, I'm just not into that anymore. Like, I don't believe in it. It's not how I want to, you know, spend my life. You know, I still want to help people. I still want to, you know, help people become who they want to be and all that kind of stuff. But just, I can do that so much better outside of that big kind of institutional structure where there's just so, so much other stuff that goes on. Yeah. And um, so, we ended up landing out in Los Angeles, California, specifically because we just want to live by the beach for a while. And mm -hmm. uh, so we moved into, you know, our house in Texas was like 3,000 square feet with a huge yard and a fence and all. I mean, just crazy. And so now we live like in a 450 square foot, you know, one bedroom, uh, but it is right by the water. You know, we live about, you know, literally like you could walk out our front door and have your feet in the Pacific Ocean about five, yeah. 10 minutes later. And, um, and so we started, you know, lots of different things. One of the first things was a podcast. Um, we, we started also a nonprofit and the podcast is really like the voice in the nonprofit, the nonprofit. Yeah. The idea behind that is really to just to build a network of people that are, um, uh, the way I refer to them is just generous dreamers, people that have like a yes, yes, I can, yes, you can very positive attitude where whatever it is that's in your heart to do, like we fully believe that that is, it is possible for you to do that. And how can we help you do that? You know, not just like, yeah, go for it. You can do it. You can make a difference, but actually be able to help people uh, fund and to start the things that are in their heart to do you know, specifically the things that they want to do that are a positive impact to the people around them. So it's not like, well, I want to start a company that's going to make me millions of dollars. Great. We'll go <laughs> find some startup cash and investors. But for people that have like, yeah. ideas for creative nonprofits or community projects, things like that. Um, then we also started a creative consulting company uh, called Pebble Creative. Uh, my wife is a writer and an editor. Um, and so we help people in, on, you know, on the for-profit side as well, um, you know, building websites, designing books, you know, editing, uh, helping start businesses and that type of thing. Um, so it's just kind of all wrapped up into one, you know, Russell Ruse is kind of like our lab project that we have of like, okay, these are some of the things that I'm learning in my small business and how I can help somebody else, you know, start their own small business and help somebody else with their marketing and that kind of stuff. Um, but then the podcast, we put it out two times a week, Mondays and Thursdays. Um, it's at slingshotshow.com. And we have all kind of all kind of stuff uh, on there. You know, we talk about uh, people that have, you know, left uh, their normal life and went out on their own to kind of live their dream and to chase it and see what happens. Um, I, I also do stand up comedy out here. So sometimes we have comedians on. Um, sometimes we talk about wrestling stuff. Sometimes it's just my wife and I talking. Um, but it's really fun. And, uh, you know, we're about a year and a half into that as well. Um, coming up on episode 100. Um, so we just have, you know, a lot of different little irons in the fire. Uh, but really, it all revolves around the idea of, you know, you can, you can do what's in your heart to do. And not only that, but how can we help you? How can we help you do that? So in this next year, I'm going to get into a little bit more of um, back into some public speaking, uh, doing live events, and then also doing some uh, coaching and things like that and taking on some life coach clients uh, where we can actually very, very closely, you know, uh, life on life, help them see what's in their heart, uh, you know, become a reality. And it's actually funny that and as you're talking, that the, the thing that came into my mind is like, why isn't he doing life coaching? Like yeah. this guy, <laughs> this guy is full of energy and he's, he could, you know, definitely motivate me to do some things that, um, you know, I need to get doing, but yeah, no, that's definitely, like I said, you know, it seems like you have, uh, one, you, you don't sit still. Uh, it seems like you definitely have the, uh, the, the hustle and the creativity and, and that mindset. And you're just, you, you've got to have your, your hand in something. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, and you've, you've able to, you know, uh, the podcast was awesome. And like I said, I tuned into the Christmas one, Thanks. um, you know, last night it was very, uh, you know, I think you and your, your wife make a good team. Uh, you know, like, I don't know if that's an, an always a, a deal, uh, on the podcast, but I think you bring a balance. It was a, it was a really entertaining show. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed the message, 
of, of you know, helping out people and, uh, you know, doing something. Um, I find it weird because, like, Christmas is so much of a commercial holiday now. Right. Uh, you know, right. P- people feel like they have to buy things for people. And, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm the, you know, I get where, where we've built up that, you know, that's kind of where things are. But I'm like, hey, you know, it's Tuesday in the middle of May. Well, I wouldn't say May because it's my birthday month, but uh, in the middle of April, you know, it's Tuesday in April. Like, if you really appreciate what I'm doing and you want to buy me something, like, why does it have to be this certain day? Right. Uh, you know, like, just just do something nice for somebody. It doesn't have to be because it's Christmas or Valentine's Day. or And, you know, my wife feels the same way. And, you know, it, that just turns me off to the holiday. Like, so much so that like you know she's like i'm not gonna get you anything because i buy you stuff all the time and i'm like same here like I, you know i i told her like do you want anything and she's like do i need anything i'm like i don't need anything and she's like do you i'm like no like you know we we'll take care of each other and we appreciate each other enough that it doesn't have to be on this special day or you know like an event um and i wish people would gear more towards that like if you like if you appreciate somebody like just you know buy them a gift like i why does it have to be this day? Uh, and I know you might have a different outlook on it because you know of the religious beliefs. Uh, no, not but- at all. Be- let me, let me, all because uh, this has come up a couple of times in a few things that I've recently recorded. It, it feels like Christmas has become pretty. It's uh, the word I would use is like mechanical and yeah. like routine, where it's like, oh, it's it's December. All right, at, you know, get a list of things to buy. And, you know, basically ask, you know, ask your family and friends for a shopping list. Yeah. Go to the store and buy whatever for them. And then they can open and be like, oh, exactly what I asked for. You know, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, a friend. And if, of, if it's not, if it's not, they're like, I thought I said this. Right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> a, a friend of mine, we just had her on the podcast. She was, she was complaining about her mom who mom kept asking for a list. And she was like, mom, if you don't know me well enough to know what I would want, then just don't, you know, but at the same time, I do think that the Christmas holiday, it does, it kind of forces us into an opportunity to actually think about like, what would that person like? You know what I mean? Uh, And so if you can kind of find that balance and, you know, and, and so we, you know, my wife and I, we did our Christmas shopping the other day, you know, on Amazon and, and, you know, we had lists from people and for some of them yeah. like, okay, we'll get them that on the list, whatever. But for some, you know, some of the things it was like, oh, you know what they'd really like. And I think that, you know, it's a good reminder for us to take time every now and then to like notice the people around us and really think about them and really, you know, not just phone it in or just, yeah. oh, that looks good. But like, what would they really like? Like what would really like make them feel special? And that's something that we should be doing. Like, I'm not going to say necessarily every day, but I mean, you can, I'd like to do it every day, but you know, may, like even like once a week, is there somebody that I should talk to? Is there somebody I should reach out to? Is there somebody that I should, you know, who in my life right now needs maybe a little encouragement or, yeah. or if you're in a store and you see something like, Oh, we gotta, I gotta get that for so-and-so, but it, yeah. you know, and so kind of Christmas kind of forces us into having some of those thoughts, you know, by default. Um, but at the same time, it has become like this big, ugly monster of just like mechanic capitalism, <laughs> you know, yeah. but um, you know, and then as far as like, is the religious aspect and stuff, like everything that they have, you know, created around Christmas, like the nativity and all that kind of stuff. Like none of it is actually even remotely historically accurate. (laughs) So it's, it's really funny that, you know, so many, you know, super conservative Christian people will defend that stuff to no end, but it's like, look, uh, it really has, it's, there's no historical fact or foundation, (laughs) you know, for any of that stuff. So just relax. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's like I said. I I was glad I I didn't feel the. I mean, I I'm not the only one on that that subject. Um, I, you know, I like I said, it's it's inevitable, and you know, it's also like, you know, I I started this a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to make sure I had enough guests lined up, that that I wasn't gonna slack a week or anything like that, and uh, I I found a lot of people already shutting down for the year. Yeah, and you know, I'm. Of that, you know, like I said, I've if if I'm not working, I'm not happy. Kind of, you know, like I, I came into a, a conversation the other day, and the guy was like, "If you could drop everything you're doing right now, what would you do?" And I'm like, "I'd still have Photoshop open. I'd still be working on something." Yeah. He's like, "Well, you don't have to. What do you want to do?" I'm like, "That's that's that's the thing. Like, I happen 
to be getting paid for what I love to do. Like, it's not, you know, if, I, if, if, you know, like the podcast, like, you know, I could have been like, oh, well, you know, I only have a month left in the year. Like, let's, let's start this, you know, at the beginning of the year when I start working out as well, you know, that kind of whole new right, year's right. rah, rah thing. And I'm like, no, I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to do this now. And I'm going to, I'm going to get on the ball and trying to find people that are like, yeah, no, uh, I, I'm not doing anything. I've got, you know, family travels and, and whatnot. Um, you know, that's, and, and that was another reason I looked at the podcast and I'm like, you know, it, it, we're in, in a busy world. Like we, you got to keep moving. If you, you want to be successful, you know, you got to be out there working when others don't. Um, you know, I have clients in Australia and I was up this morning till six and I could have, you know, I could have easily, you know, sent you an email and been like, yeah, we're not doing this. Right. I didn't get in, like, get enough sleep, but if I'm not doing it, someone else is, you know, someone else is promoting their product or their, you know, podcast or, you know, whatever they have to, to push out. And, you know, that kind of leads into one of the questions I had for you was, is that drive and that mentality uh, something that can be taught or is that something that you think is in a person? I, I think a little bit of both. I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with kind of like, you know, that nature versus nurture thing. I think, some people like their parents kind of push them. I know mine, um, you know, were very, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that they like push me to an extreme, but like they were always, they always expected a lot of me. And so expectations okay. were high. And so, um, you know, but I'm the oldest, like my personality kind of, you know, it is, it lends itself to being very driven. Um, and actually to be quite honest, like, especially coming out of that, you know, giant mega church thing, which yeah. um, like you have to be, so driven, like there was no days off. I mean, just ridiculous. I actually have calmed down quite a bit uh, in the last three or four years, um, you know, because I can tend to be very, very hard on myself and very, um, you know, just work to no end and really just drive something into the ground, you know. But, um, and my wife is the exact opposite. So she has actually taught me a lot of just kind of relaxing and, and just, you know, and having a certain pace, you know, to your life and to your work. Um, and at the same time, too, is that when you're working for yourself, when you're doing your own thing, like there, you have the opportunity to work on those things that you really believe in. And so for me, especially with Rasselroos, it gets a lot, it gets very blurry um, yeah. because I enjoy wrestling. I enjoy watching it. I enjoy the people. And so, you know, I, I'll, I sit through every Monday night, I sit through three hours of Raw, you know, but I'm live tweeting and we always sell underwear on Monday nights because yeah. of the tweets and the things and we're doing giveaways and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and so it kind of gets kind of blurry. It was like, I enjoy it, but this is also something that I'm kind of working on. Um, you know, it also gives me a great excuse to like never miss a, a, a big event. Um, uh, yeah. because I'm kind of like, Hey, you know, look, we got, I got a tweet. I've got to, I've got to be there, you know, <laughs> so yeah. like, sorry, I got to miss dinner. I got to miss this, you know, um, you know, and you get to go to WrestleMania as a tax write off. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah. And you know, you, you did point on it. Um, you know, it's, you know, you stepping away from that situation and I feel like, you know, it doesn't like, you know, in my case, like I do not consider, I, you know, I have my clients, but I don't consider them work. Like right. I never, you know, you'll never hear me, you'll never hear me say it's work. I always have, you know, if it's an update on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, it's always a client project, you know, cause I'm helping a right. client with something. Right. It's always a project. It's never like, Oh, I got to work. And you know, I have other more, more proper designer friends that do, you know, like the big branding and the logos and stuff. And, um, uh, you know, it's nice when they're like, we just, I just finished a project for four grand. I'm like, oh, wow, like, that's awesome. I'm here making 40, 50 bucks a flyer. Right. Uh, you know, right. that that's great. But at the same time, you know, one, you know, they're like, this guy's, you know, this guy's an asshole and this guy is giving me headaches left and right. And he wants, you know, all this work. And I'm like, I have no problems with my clients. Yeah. Like, I love it. I love everybody. Uh, you know, there's no stress in my life, uh, you know, and on that end, you know, and at the same time, it's, you know, they'll do their big project and they'll be done with it and they'll never hear from that person again. And I have clients going on, you know, two, three years now, uh, you know, and it's always after we, we get rid of, rid of the, the work aspect. It's always, how are you doing? How's the family? You know, how's the kids? You know, is everything cool? Like, is there anything outside of, you know, this project that I could help you with? Like, is there other stuff? Is, do you have a side, a side project, something else that you're doing that you might need some graphics? Um, you know, I, I really built the relationship with people 
And, uh, you know, it's like on, on this, we worked, you know, months ago and, you know, I knew that I could get in contact with you and that you'd be in for something like this. Yeah. Like, you know, I could tell the vibe you, you do a podcast so you understand, you know, where I'm coming from. Right. And, uh, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's interesting people that I meet along the way. It's also people that I know that I feel like on this podcast, if I can get your story out, if I can, you know, open some eyes, some different eyes to what you do, um, you know, then the podcast is a success. I, I did the first, you know, the first zero zero episode and I talked about me and uh, I've, I've tried to not talk about me anymore in, in these podcasts, but it does come up. Yeah, it's got, uh, to. It's got to. It's got to, but you know, it's, it's my point on things. But yeah, no, it's, um, you know, that energy that you had to focus on the church now that seemed like a burden so much that you had to leave. It's like, you're still doing it. You're still probably working even harder, if not, oh, yeah, for sure. you know, trying to, trying to get all these side projects and all these things going. But it's, you know, it's not, you know, tweeting during raw. Oh, wow. I'm like, yeah. that's not a bird. Oh, bird. Yeah, sure. Like, okay. Uh, don't forget to tweet during raw. Like what? Right. Like, you know, that's going to be something I'm going to enjoy and do. It's not going to seem like work. Right. And, uh, you know, I think that's, you know, a lot of, of people's deal, like they work their nine to five job and then they come home and they do these other things. And, you know, it's like, I know we have to go do the nine to five cause that's pays the bills. But, you know, my passion is over here and, and whatever their other deal is. Right. And right. Uh, I just feel fortunate and, and blessed that, you know, I've been able to tie my passion with what I do. Um, you know, and if I, if, you know, if I, I, I had a friend of mine tell me the other day, he's like, are you going to do fi- flyers till you're 50? I'm like, I, I could. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like I'd be happy with that. Um, you know, and that's where the expansion of, of the podcast and, and trying to help others out. Right. Uh, right. Very much what you said on, you know, on your podcast, the Christmas podcast last night, it's, you know, in a small way, reaching out to others and helping others and bringing awareness to what they're doing, uh, you know, and, and giving back, you know, paying it forward type of situation. So um, anytime you know, I can bring someone on here and have those discussions, I think I'm doing okay. And, you know, I never, I went into this not thinking, oh, I'm going to like blaze my own path and then change the world with my little podcast. Uh, you know, I'm doing it for, I'm not doing it for, you know, the numbers I, I am on iTunes and Stitcher and just, I just put it up there. I didn't think I'd get accepted. Uh, you know, I'm just doing it for me. It's, you know, like I said, it's a project. It's, it's something great. I'm going to, I'm going to grow into. Um, uh, you know, when the first couple of ones came out, I told people like, go ahead and listen to them. They're, they're they, they, they suck. I'm like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you like I had the greatest, uh, you know, the greatest voice or the greatest, uh, cadence yet, but, you know, with time, I'm sure with you as well, like the first podcast, the first couple of podcasts were probably not as polished as these. Uh, oh, man, it was, it was rough. I, I mean, I, it, mostly the recording, like I, I cleaned it up pretty good in post-production, but you know, when I sat down in that closet, you know, I, I would, re- back in the early days, I was recording them in my closet and it was just me talking into a microphone. I mean, it took me, you know, five or six tries to even just get myself comfortable enough to where I was like actually being able to talk and like get it yeah. you know, and tell my story and that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, so now it, it's, it's no problem. And we, we, you know, we've got a little bit better setup and we do it out in the living room and it's, you know, fun and it, it's mm-hmm. great, you know, but, um, yeah, it's, and, and this is one of the things too, is I, I feel that if you are doing something that you would enjoy consuming, you know, like, uh, the way that I, like you take it from like a product perspective, if you are making a product that you would be excited about that you would buy, then th- that's the product that you should be making. That's the product that, that there's going to be people that are going to buy that. Like I, and this is so funny. It's like the, the, the Russell Roos designs that we sell that I am not that excited about the ones that I would not like, I probably wouldn't buy that one. They don't sell like, yeah, they, they don't sell as well at all. They might sell a few and, and the, the podcast that I record that I'm kind of like, yeah, that one wasn't that great. Like nine times out of 10, the downloads are nowhere near what they are on the good ones, you know? And so yeah. if you are making something every week that you're like, if I saw that flyer, I would think that is awesome. Then, Hey, you're yeah. doing good. You know? And it's, yeah. and there's going to be people that are going to hate, you know, what you make. I, I like the, for the first six weeks, of Russell Roos, we got nothing 
but like mouth breather, basement dweller wrestling marks telling us how stupid we are. Even I think somebody, uh, I, I don't think it was Jim Cornette, uh, but maybe I think somebody that like works with him or something like that just, I mean, railed on it, you know? And, but like, I know that like, Hey, what you are going to do, nobody is going to universally accept everything that you yeah. do. You know, um, you have to, if there's not people that are like, eh, not into it, well then there's not going to be anybody that is, you know, because there's, you're not giving them anything really to, to hold on to. So um, I, I think that, if you're making stuff that you think is good, if you're making stuff that you would listen to, then you're headed on the right track. You just, you, it just takes time for your audience to find you. Yeah. And definitely, like I said, it's what you're doing is, is definitely, I don't know. I, I wanted to say trailblazing, but I mean, um, you know, in all honesty, you are the first to, to go in, in this direction. So uh, it's definitely uh, something new. I think uh, most times people are very afraid of new stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. especially so, undergarments. But, <laughs> yes, but you've definitely found your cadence. Uh, you know, things are, are definitely looking up for you from this project that you know you didn't think was going to be much of it uh, to where you guys are at right now. Uh, what's what's 2016 look for? Look, uh, look, look in the what direction are you guys going with that? Uh, New, uh, new, new product, new design, uh, more of the same. We got any surprises there? Yeah, yeah. We're I, this is this is kind of we're really excited because in the last couple of months we've we've had a, a really good relationship form with some friends out here in Los Angeles. Um, one of which is uh, she is a business or she's finishing up her MBA and she's kind of taken Rasselroos on as kind of like a little side project for herself as far as consulting us on a business standpoint and really you know helping us analyze our financials and and look at our inventory and how we're doing things and um and she is really really challenging us and and i you know we just sat down and she's like well tell me like what's frustrating to you like what are the things that seem to not be working and and you know i just you know i told her you know i mean there's some of the things that like you know, when it comes to like inventory or this process or that process or, or getting this right, like it is so frustrating. Like there's times where I just want to like, you know, pour gasoline all over all the underwear, and just, <laughs> just burn it, you know, and like, okay, whatever, we're done, you know. Um, but uh, she's really helped us shed a lot. Um, so actually what we're going to be doing is hopefully in January, we're going to begin to start doing uh, some, a uh, few different kinds of products, not just the yeah. underwear, um, but they will be more exclusive items, uh, very limited edition, and then also limited availability, uh, possibly maybe one new product every month um, that we'll have available for pre-order. Uh, you know, awesome. kind of in a lot of ways, uh, similar to like, uh, I guess the way uh, Top Rope Tuesday would do their, you know, t-shirt of the week, that type of deal. Yeah. Um, but we're going to kind of go into some of the uh, the edges of wrestling products and things like that. Um, I'll, I'll give a, a sneak peek of, you know, kind of the Holy grail, the uh, one day possibly maybe we could make this happen. And that would be the giant Gonzalez onesie. Awesome. That would definitely be awesome. And it sounds like <laughs> she's, I, I would, I definitely would order one. Uh, it sounds like this, uh, this person who's taken on you guys as a project, uh, is really opening your eyes to more of the, the business side of things. Oh, for sure. That's because, you know, I, I have a very creative mind. I have ideas for days, but when it comes down to black and white dollars and cents on the page, um, that's where I can kind of get bogged down. I don't really understand it. Um, and just for instance, uh, the, the things that she's helped us point out is that like, you know, what we started off, I think we had like six designs available um, in four different sizes. And so she asked this, you know, at this point, like how many, uh, should the term she used was stock keeping units. So like different things. So like yeah. a, uh, you know, this design in a medium, that would be one, this design in a large would be, that would be another one. Uh, you know, we had it were upwards of like freaking 400 shop, you know, stock keeping units. Yeah. And she was like, do you understand how ridiculous that is? And, and basically it's just like, we've spread our butter too thin you know, yeah. across the bread. Uh, and so, and what I, when I analyze the numbers, when I look at it, it's like, it's very obvious what the best sellers are. It's very yeah. obvious that like, Hey, you know, we could, you know, here's things that we could cut. Here's things that we could trim to streamline everything. Um, yeah. And so, 
that's going to answer a lot of our headaches and stuff like that on the day to day type stuff. And then, you know, moving forward into the more exclusive products and stuff like that, you know, it has been, especially with us doing the Comic Con events and stuff like that, uh, the underwear is, is awesome. But, mm -hmm. uh, and we've just now started to advertise on Facebook. Up until now, it's been all just word of mouth and Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, but now we actually run a few Facebook ads um, every day. Um, we only spend like maybe 4 or $5 a day on it. Uh, we keep it real low, but the, it, they're working very, very well. The ads are, have great return. Um, but, um, you know, I feel like there might be a bit of a ceiling uh, when it comes to the underwear, specifically at the live events, uh, just because of um, people are kind of hesitant to buy underwear in public. You know, that's that's kind of a thing. Um, yeah. And then also, I think that there's just a lot of opportunities out there to make great wrestling merchandise or, or any any whatever genre you're in. I think that there is just a real do-it-yourself type of vibe that's out there right now where people are, you know, not going to Target and Walmart to buy the stuff, but they're like going to Instagram, they're going to Etsy, they're going to this place or that place and stuff. Um, you know, like one of the things that we got into this year that was a huge seller for us, uh, which I don't think we're going to be able to continue into the new year is we were making the vintage t-shirts. Um, we would take old fabric. I saw that. Yeah. We would take old fabric from the eighties and nineties that we would find on eBay or, uh, you know, wherever from collectors. And we would take that, we'd cut out the designs and sew it on a brand new shirt. It was something that I, I purchased the shirt like that about four years ago in New York city at this craft fair. I got a Mr. T one. Uh, and wow. I love that shirt. I thought it was great. So American Apparel was doing this big sale at their warehouse and, you know, basically like giving away these t-shirts for a dollar and, you know, they were totally fine, you know, good quality. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with these shirts, but I feel like I got to buy them just because they're a dollar. Like they're normally like these things retail for 15. I could figure out yeah. something to put on them. And so I got on eBay, found some of that fabric and we started making them and man, we've sold hundreds of those shirts. Um, you know, and those have been a huge seller for us, but you know, it's a very limited type thing. You can't remake that material. I mean, you could, but then it wouldn't be a vintage thing anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, and then of course the licensing and stuff that you'd have to pay for, but, um, you know, we kind of are able to fly right under the radar of that copyright stuff because it is, it's basically, we're just making a homemade craft, you know, and selling it online, yeah. you know, so it's totally. Yeah. When I, yeah, when I first saw those, I was like, is he getting someone to redesign the design on the shirt. I like at first I, I, before, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, he's, he, he hired a designer to, to recopy the, cause I've, I've had people come up to me and be like, can you recreate this right. CM Punk shirt? Right. And I'm like, I could, but you know, do we want to go there? Um, you know, that's not a problem. I could redesign it, but, um, and that's what I first, I thought of. And then I looked closer and I'm like, okay, well, he's just like cutting them out. Yeah. yeah. So I guess he could get, I, I, he, I guess he could get away with it. I'm like, I was trying to cover your ass as well. I'm like, right. uh, like, yeah, I, I might have to email him, but no, that, uh, it's a fine line that, you know, you, you dabbled in, but yeah, no, I, I, you know, I could tell those were going to go really well because, you know, we all had shirts like that as kids. Right. And, you know, I really wish I still had my Ultimate Warrior shirt. Yeah. Uh, necessarily wouldn't fit me, but, I mean, I'd like to have it still. And, I know. I, uh, I, had a, I had a diesel tank top that, man, uh, I, I got it at my first ever wrestling event that I went to. It was, I think, in 1994, 95, Diesel was the champ, and it was a house show in Houston, Texas, at awesome. uh, I want to say it was at the uh, it's at the place that wherever uh, the summit lake yeah the summit wherever Lakewood Church is now yep and uh, <clears throat> and so but yeah I had a uh, at an Ultimate Warrior Ringer tee right. it had the orange yeah orange sleeves like yeah that was my shirt and um you know and, and that you know you tap on nostalgia like you know we all had those shirts and that's right. why those are selling so well right um you know and, and like you know you said you had this person consulting with you. And she's uh, she's letting you know that you know you I, I don't know if you're aware of this now, but you're you're stepping into the next level right, of uh, of right. what you guys are doing. Right. You know, right. it's it was a fun project, and now I really feel like uh, with with her help and with you know more awareness of what's going on, uh, you know, you guys will be in Walmart soon. Uh, yeah, like you know, that's nice. that's where you're that's that's where you're headed, man. <laughs> um, you know, the pos the, the positivity and where you guys gone so far. Um, you know, you guys are definitely on the right track. 
Yeah, we've we've yeah, just we and we've had some really really awesome coincidental type of things. Of course, I mean, at the very beginning, just a few months after we started, we ran into CM Punk at, in Beverly Hills, and I happened to be wearing a Colt Cabana shirt. He bought our breakfast. We ended up, you know, thanking him, talking to him, told him about the Russell Ruse. He said he had seen them because Zach Ryder posted on Instagram. Just all this coincidental stuff. Then they talk about it on that big controversial podcast. You know, the last five minutes of that, it's them talking about him buying the Russell Ruse guys pancakes. Yeah, and that was huge. It made our Black Friday super big. Um, and then, you know. Uh, we just a few weeks ago, we happened to be sitting with our business friend out in front of a Baskin Robbins here in Los Angeles. And there was uh, a guy next to us that saw me wearing a Roddy Piper shirt. We start talking, come to find out he's the co-editor in chief of Variety Magazine. And he, you know, he loved the product. He gave me his card and he said, yeah, yeah I can't promise anything, but you know, we'd love to feature you in the magazine sometime. And so the next day, of course, I send him like a big gift basket, you know, full of Russell Roos stuff. And he sends me back an email. Hey, thank you so much. I'm going to look for an opportunity to get you guys in. He's tweeting about it, you know, it just, and just because we just happen to be sitting there. And so I, I am a full believer in the fact that if you are taking steps to do what's in your heart to do, man, like the universe, yeah. like it like conspires with you. I think that's like a quote from the alchemist, yeah. like the universe conspires with you to see those dreams come true. You know, it just, it just kind of happens. You just have to be fearless, you know? Yeah. And at the same time, it's like, you never know who's connected to who. Exactly. Like, and that's, you know, that goes back into, into beliefs and, you know, growing up. Um, actually I'm from, uh, from San Antonio. I was actually, I, I grew up in Texas I, I migrated my way up north to Indiana for some reason. Besides, nice. that's where my wife. That's where my wife lives. But uh, I, I'm I'm still not adjusted to this cold weather crap. Uh, um, you know. But um, yeah, you know, you never know who's connected to who. That's one thing. That's why, like, I really, you know, you touched on it. You're now running Facebook ads. You know, that's something I'm gonna have to look into to doing here soon. Um, you know, everything's been organic, word of mouth, and you know, I haven't really. You know that that just shows you that our product, you know, for people to to recommend you and in, in what we do to others, um, that's something a price tag you can't put a price tag on. But you can you can buy all these different marketing ads and whatnot. But there's you know I don't have I don't have a price now. Some people might might have a price, uh, not only for the million dollar man, but for their uh, <laughs> but but for their uh, their word of mouth advertising. But you know if you know like. I know you do good stuff and stuff like that. Like I'm going to pass along, Hey, you know, have you thought about this for a Christmas or birthday idea? Like I'm right. going to do that because like, you know, we have this connection and we've worked together and, and you know, we're doing this and you're a good guy and yeah, I dig what you're doing. Um, you know, that's going to have me go tweet out what you guys do all the time. Not that I ever need, you know, or tweet not what you guys are doing anyway, but uh, you know, that connection is, is going to, you know, be, be, uh, be shared. And if you don't know, you know, if you treat everyone like they could be somebody, then you're going to do okay. That's um, right. you know, I, I, I was talking to a guy and he said, look, um, you know, I was, at, I was at this, this marketing event and everybody was trying to get to the, the speaker after, after he spoke, you know, he sat there in the crowd and he was talking to people and he's like, this guy had a circle around him of about a hundred people just listening to him. And, you know, I couldn't get in, in that crowd. I couldn't get anywhere near the guy. But um, so I just I was walking away and I was in the lobby and I started talking to this guy next to me. And, you know, we were just talking and talking. And all of a sudden, like the guy gives him his card and like he's the VP of a company. And they're like, you know, everyone's over here trying to get the attention of this guy. And just by starting a conversation by some luck that he's next to this guy and they just start talking like this guy might even be a bigger deal than the guy that everyone's crowded around. But you know, that's, that's if, you know, you just treat everyone the same and you treat everyone like they are the most important person in the world, more likely or not, you're going to get to where you need to get to. Um, that's right, right. Yeah. And definitely like, you know, like you said, um, you know, those opportunities have opened up for you. Um, you know, I, I hope that everything works out well for you. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, you did your part as well as, you know, sending him the basket. Um, you know, I, you know, I feel like people do let opportunities pass. Like you could have met him and you could have talked and you could have not take the incentive to send him a gift basket. Uh, and then he would have just, you know, your, your card would have got thrown in. And, 
and the, the drawer of business cards that, you right. know, we all have that one drawer where it's like, I don't want to throw them away because that's kind of mean, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I've got a pile of business cards and, you know, I, I have the three or four in my wallet that are actually, you know, the ones I need. I might use those. Yeah, I might use those. Like those guys seem like they could be, you know, something t- to hold on to. Like uh, obviously the Vanity Fair card would uh, would be one that you definitely have to hold on to. But right. actually it's on my refrigerator right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> see, little things like that, people, you know, in – and being creative and hustling, like I have, I have, uh, I went to an Adobe conference in Chicago and uh, they had a, a guy who lived in Chicago and he stopped by and he wasn't supposed to speak, but he, uh, he came in and stopped by and uh, his name is Chuck Anderson and he does artwork for ESPN. Uh, and, you know, I, I dig his work. And when he, he showed up, um, you know, I, I went and talked to him and I, I really did more listening to the way he conducts himself and the way he talks about art and stuff like that than actually asking, you know, questions. And, you know, we, uh, I took, I, I went for the selfie, we took the selfie and then, uh, <laughs> he gave me a business card and, you know, I, I, for the first year and a half, like I kept that business card by my monitor and it was just like, this is the level I want to get at. Like, yeah. you know, I, this is what I strive to, to do. Like one day I'd love to be able to, you know, cause you, you know, you talked about the ceiling and, you know, the wrestling flyer, that ceiling's getting uh it's getting pretty th- you know pretty much I'm I'm about to hit it um you know and, and knowing that because uh, you know when I came in and when I worked in the office uh you know I saw the budget for putting on events and you know I knew where you know it's it's not a, a big budget um right. you know some of the bigger companies have a, a nice budget but um the smaller stuff I was doing you know the budget's not where my level's starting to get at so I know I'm going to hit that ceiling soon and, you know, I'd like to branch out. I'd like to do UFC or, uh, you know, um, a, a basketball or baseball or, like, get into that kind of range of stuff. And I know without my inner my inner uh, drive and, you know, I'm pushing myself to where I want to get, it's not going to happen. So uh, those, those stories are inspirational. Uh, you know, it, it, we all have them. And uh, it's, it's what we do with, with that encounter that it really tells a lot about the person. Right. right. Got to do the work. Got to do the work. I yeah, was that, kicking, kicking yeah. myself in the butt this morning. I need to do the work. I got stuff that I've been putting off. I need to do the work. Yeah. And it's always good to have someone that's going to kind of check up, check in on you and be like, are you doing what you need to do? Not that, you know, we need it, but sometimes we do need that kick in the butt, um, yeah. you know, to, to keep us on, on the right track. So it's, Oh, it's a def- a difficult life we lead, but it's a, it's a fun one. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I definitely enjoyed uh, you coming in here and, and doing this with us today. 